this is uh, an introduction to the free ortho sense zone. So during the, this presentation, I will start by an introduction on what is a real-time application and uh, what is a real-time operating system. Then I will continue on uh, uh, slides focused on uh, free Arthos kernel. Then we will see the implementation in uh, ISF and Atmel Studio 6. So what is a real-time application? Um, the definition that you can find on the internet concerning the real-time application is the following. It's a multitasking application with a strict time constraint where each task timing can be predicted deterministically. So it's really difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. So I will try to uh, summarize uh, or expli uh, explain this uh, a bit a way clearer. So uh, mainly a real-time application is a multitasking application where each task to be executed have a time deadline. So um, depending on the time deadline in a real-time application, we can um, organize task in a two. So first one is task with a software real-time requirement, which means that if the task is not executed in time, it will not render the system useless. So for example, it's a keyboard task. As soon as you hit a key on the keyboard, uh, if it takes three, four, four seconds to display something, it will just be a laggy uh, application. It will take time, but it will not be useless. The second kind of task is the hard real-time requirement task. So in those, in those tasks, uh, breaching the time deadline will result in a, what we call an absolute failure. So it's, um, for example, uh, an airbag system. If a crash appears, if the airbag pop out uh, just uh, four seconds after, it's too late. So it's uh, resulted really an absolute failure in this case. So mainly, uh, real-time application will deals with those two kind of tasks. So um, in order to manage those requirements, we really need what we call the real-time operating system. So real-time operating system mainly intends to serve a real-time application requirement. Mm -hmm. It will always include the, the support of multiple tasks running concurrently, a scheduler which determines which task needs to be run. So as we are working with a single core device, the scheduler will select in fact, which task will be executed by the core. The next thing is the ability for the, uh, the scheduler sorry, to uh, preempt a running task. So task must have priority. And then if um, task with higher priority needs to be executed, uh, the scheduler must stop the execution of lower priority task. Then the last point is the support for inter-task communication. So inter-task communication is some objects in the kernel, in the ERTOS, that allows tasks to communicate together in order to pass information. So at software level, um, an ERTOS is usually divided in two layers. So these layers are just above the standard uh, MCU drivers so that you can find in ISF, for example. So it can be a uh, SPI driver or even mm. standard driver. Then the er you have the ERTOS kernel, which uh, embeds all the uh, task management. Then the ERTOS adaptation layer that allows the application to uh, use different tasks. So the one that uh, we have included in, uh, in Atmel Studio for the moment is the uh, free ERTOS kernel. So FreeRTOS is a free real-time kernel on top of which Cortex-M3 and Cortex-M4 a microcontroller application can be built. Uh, it's developed and maintained by a company which is called Real-Time Engineer uh, since 10 years. Uh, they are still continue to improve uh, this, uh, this uh, FreeRTOS. Uh, in terms of numbers, um, there, there are there was a study uh, done by EE Times that shows uh, this number. 13% uh, of the ERTOS project uh, use free ERTOS. 24% uh, of the 
current Airtos user uh, wants to use free Airtos in the 12 uh, next months for their future project. So this means that a lot of people are moving from uh, 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 standard Airtos to free Airtos. In terms of uh, downloads, uh, they have uh, 77,000, more than 77,000 downloads per year. So it's really huge. And uh, they also provide a der derivative commercial license. Uh, it's no more free Airtos, but it's called open Airtos in this case. So in terms of features, uh, free Airtos has a scheduler that can be configured for preemptive, cooperative, or hybrid operation. I will not explain what is this uh, during the presentation. You just uh, you will you will find everything in a, in a hands on. It also have a portable uh, code sources structure uh, which has been written in C, so mainly for uh, porting uh, free Atos from core to core. So it's really interesting for a customer because if you don't want to use or if you already use. Uh, FreeRTOS on another core, you will be able to easily port this code uh, on the on the Cortex M uh, device. So it's also a tick-based RTOS, and it's not written in this uh, in this slides. And also, it's also tickless based uh, RTOS. Tick is just um, the counting uh, for the RTOS kernel in order to manage task. So it's a counting value. When we talk about tick and, uh, and tickless, it's mainly for low power. So when uh, uh, an AirTOS is tickless, it means that you can enter in low power mode. So a free AirTOS has just made a, an improvement on this point and now they are tickless also. Uh, they embed the common kernel object such as Q, mutex, binary and counting semaphores and a software timer. So again, I will not enter in detail. You will find everything in the hands-on documentation. And you will be able to play with all those uh, kernel objects. And last but not least, uh, it's, uh, it has a small ROM footprint, which means that uh, you can fine-tune um, the FreeRTOS footprint uh, in order to go down to 6 key uh, bytes. So it goes from 6 kibytes to 10 kibytes. So it mainly depends on the feature that you will use in the kernel. You can configure everything in what we call the free Atos config dot h, which, which will be automatically included if you use the ISF uh, module. Uh, then you will be able to reduce the footprint. So this small footprint uh, is really good for, uh, for uh, embedded uh, system such as MCU, uh, what you can find, uh, build with MCU. So in terms of license, uh, FreeRTOS is licensed uh, under what we call a modified GPL. So it's code free, royalty free, and the most important, if a customer uh, needs to, uh, to uh, use FreeRTOS, um, he will not have to open his, uh, his source code. So this is what we call modified GPL. So you can find m more, a lot more uh, information on FreeRTOS on their official website, which is uh, uh, www.freeRTOS.org. So I will let you uh, go there if you need more information. In terms of uh, its integration in uh, ISF and Atmel Studio 6, uh, we have a dedicated module for FreeRTOS. So what is important to know is that FreeRTOS is not linked to one specific uh, microcontroller. So um, it's available and it's compatible. This module is compatible for all the SAM products. So whatever the project that you create under Atmel Studio 6, if it's a SAM project, you will be able to add this module and it will be automatically uh, configured. So then after you can fine tune your, your, your module in order to reduce the, uh, the size. So again, uh, you will be able to, uh, to, uh, to uh, try this in the in the dedicated hands-on. So just uh, a quick uh, screenshot of the ISF wizard. Uh, you will see the dedicated modules for the kernel here. Any question on the implementation and on uh, on free autos? No. Okay. So you can find in a uh, uh, ISF uh, different example. So the free autos basic example 
which is just a switch between two different tasks and blink LED. The second one is the free autos peripheral control example, which uh, mainly demonstrates uh, the use of inter interface layer, such as UART, TUI, uh, two-wire interface, sorry, and SPI. Um, the third one is the free autos uh, LWIP example, so it will mainly simulate a TFTP uh, server that allows the user to put and, uh, and get files. So mainly it's for some for e device. And uh, the last one is the FreeAtos USB MSC example. In addition to this, uh, you will have the hands-on that will be ported into an application node that customer will be able to use as reference when he wants to start with, uh, with uh, FreeAtos. One thing which is really difficult when you are using uh, AirTOS uh, on uh, MCU device is the debug. So we have had uh, two extensions to Atmel Studio 6 that will allow uh, customers or even uh, you to debug a FreeRTOS application. The first one is FreeRTOS Viewer. So um, it has been developed by Atmel. It's available from the studio extension gallery and it mainly allows to watch uh, system information such as uh, number of tasks, the task number, the scheduler sta status and a lot of more uh, information. So again, also object information. So that's a, that's a simple way to debug. Uh, the second extension that has been added is uh, FreeRTOS plus Trust, plus Trust, sorry. Uh, which has been uh, developed by uh, a company uh, called Persepio uh, in collaboration with FreeRTOS. Um, it's a high-end, let's say, high-end debug tool that will allow us to, um, to communicate via JTAG uh, or SWD, or JTAG mainly, uh, with the, the core or with the, the CPU and then get all the information on the on the the free uh, on the real time application which is running on the CPU, so you will have information on which task which task is running, how they are executed, and you will have also information on the on different kernel objects that will be used. Uh, this uh, tool is available in two versions, so one free version, uh, which only includes the the viewer. Uh, and some few information, but here you can see in the in the screenshot, uh, kernel objects and uh, kernel services are not available in the free version. But you can also uh, pay for or have a li license for uh, this uh, tool, and then you will be able to see all the kernel objects and kernel services call. During the hands-on, we will use this uh, in order to uh, to control or in order to debug or applications, so there will be a, a, a full description on how to use the, the, the tool. So that's it for um, the presentation, the in introduction to uh, FreeRTOS. You can find much more information on FreeRTOS website, or even numbers on EE Times web website, or even you can find a tutorial book and reference manual directly on a FreeRTOS uh, site. It's a paying one, so and the uh, last point is, uh, as I told you, we will turn the hands-on into uh, a dedicated application node that will be published on, uh, on Atmel website uh, soon. So any question on, uh, on FreeRTOS? It was a quick introduction, but... Uh Do you have any experience um, compared to other uh, FreeRTOS compared to other operating systems? Yes. Like something from VXWorks or whatever? Not v VXWorks, but yes, we are currently porting it's quietly it's done. Uh, Micreon on uh, on Atmel Studio 6, which is really a professional uh, AirTOS. So I think it will be available soon, and I hope that uh, we will perform training on this also. And yeah. you say a little bit, probably you're not the expert, but um, the question will come: What's the difference between three? Actors? That's a that's a good question. Mainly the stacks that are uh, okay. inside. So FreeRTOS is mainly the kernel. Uh, we are uh, developing, uh, in collaboration with uh, FreeRTOS, uh, or real-time engineer, some few, few, uh, few not I cannot say stacks, but link between all driver and FreeRTOS in order to ease the use. Uh, but if you compare to MicroAMP, for example, 
uh, they provide complete stacks for uh, uh, CAN or other or the, or the complete solution. Yes. So this is mainly the difference. After for the for the kernel itself, I would say that it's quite similar. Probably um, microM it's uh, as it is professional one. Uh, you can have certification and a few things uh, to ease the certification in some case, yes. You're welcome. Any other question? So, thank you. <laughs>